Personalizing food is really important because we've discovered something new about ourselves that actually there isn't one guideline that fits everybody. We've had 50 years of guidelines and they've failed totally. That everybody responds to the same calories, the same fat, the same carbohydrates. We know this is complete rubbish. So we've observed this for a while, we haven't known why, and now we know why. It's because we all have very different gut microbes, a very different gut microbe community. And by understanding that, we can then start to individualize uh, the foods that people eat to maximize their health. Diets in the classical sense of excluding some food groups, whether it's going low fat or low carb, are a bad idea for some people and a good idea for others. So at the moment we can't tell if uh, you or I go on a diet whether that diet is going to work or not for us. Some will, some won't, but the range is going to be huge. So uh, in general, if you eat, people eat less, they will lose weight, but some will lose just a tiny amount and others will lose 10, 20 kilos. So if we can start to understand, pull that apart and say which foods is it that uh, you respond badly to and which you respond well to, we can very easily start shifting um, our patterns of eating and so that everybody knows what's good for them and what to avoid eating regularly. Because at the moment we're just doing it in the dark, completely blind to these responses and we now know that we respond very differently to uh, the same foods. Genetic epidemiology is uh, the study of populations, looking at risks of various diseases and traits and looking at factors like genes or microbes that might underlie them. So it's looking at the difference in a population that would explain why some people get fat, some people stay thin. At a, at a group level and it's, uh, it evolved from genetics and the new field that I'm in, microbiome, depends on genetics to test everybody. That's why a lot of people are moving from genetics to study microbes because you need the same techniques to do it. And that's one of the exciting reasons that I've shifted my work from uh, the fact that you can find genes that make people susceptible to being overweight or being skinny but you can't change that, whereas you can very easily change someone's microbes. And we share 99.5% of our genes with each other, we only share about 25% of our microbes. And that tells you that it's a much bigger effect uh, than we would have thought possible. These microbes are chemical factories. They have 200 times more genes than we do. And that allows them to produce many more chemicals than we can. They produce our vitamins, they produce our hormones, they produce all our metabolites that influence our immune system. So it's just become noticeable that this is a new organ. It's like a virtual organ that we need to start thinking about when we talk about general health and nutrition in particular. We need to be thinking, how can I help my microbes to proliferate and produce healthy substances? What do I need to feed them? How do I look after them? A bit like you would a garden. And if you understand, most gardeners understand having the right soil, the fertilizers, uh, new seeds, a bit of variety, seasonal variation. Same is true for our gut microbes. Treat them like you would your garden and you can't go far wrong.